All right, so one more sound check and we will begin. What a great week this was. And I mean, it was kind of a, an interesting week in the sense that uh, just a few days ago, everyone was thinking that it was going to be, um, you know, the end of the world. I think our analysis was calling for something different. Um, I was just sharing before we started my weekly thoughts and observations. This is something I write. I'm pretty proud of it. Um, I write this every um, weekend. Apparently right now it's uh, Microsoft Word not responding perfect, um, but that's all right. Uh, one of the things that we wrote about in that um, this week was that my, my uh, analysis suggests that the market is going to see and test and at least get back to uh, positive on the year for some of the indexes, and we'll share that with you in just a minute. But before we go further, please take a moment to uh, understand that trading is risky. This is the important disclaimers. Uh, that we need to put out. Um, past performance is not indicative of futures results. And um, this is information that I put out for myself, for you guys, for educational purposes. And we appreciate it if you don't copy it. So next, I wanted to quickly, as the email suggested today, to invite you to kind of a follow-up webinar. Now that the markets are closed, um, kind of take a look and see what we were looking at this week. Um, we had multiple uh, market trades in, in day trades because during the day that's about what you know we had to work with. Uh, crude oil, while I think a lot of people may have been on the, the, the bearish side of crude oil, we were identifying, the, as I earlier pointed out, weekly high closed OGs. As a reminder, we had this little last conditional change and uh, what we were looking for was a breakout over, if you guys remember, I kept using this it, coincident number, double nickel, 55. It was like a, a kind of a, a funny um, coincidence that 55 was, you know, in various markets. Um, but needless to say, we were looking for a market breakout going with trend. It was a PPS buy signal breakout on Monday in crude oil saying we should go up and see how many stops are, you know, exactly above 75, which is right where, where we were. Um, and then... What we were looking at Monday, we had a little day trade here. We were looking not a, you know, it wasn't a wealth builder, but it was the right side of the trend. We were looking for the market to rally up, and, and we waited for that trend to kind of expunge itself. Now, what you didn't see, because we were uh, using either Trade Navigator, and we, we uh, went through the week on Tuesday and Wednesday with um, showing you guys uh, how I utilize Thinkorswim as well in its scanning features, but this is the... Um, the product behind the scenes that you guys didn't see in the trading room. This is the trade station indicators um, that have a very similar thing. They have the PPS sell signal. They have something unique. It's a histogram, a momentum indicator designed and built off. This is a, um, a histogram that gives us a reflection of the momentum gain or loss of what's happening between the price, these PPS buy and sell signals, and the moving averages. So it kind of combines as the market trend starts to move up. If the green bars start to make divergence patterns, it starts to give us a warning sign. Anyway, we were looking at a small little trade to back down to that 61 uh, area, and it's exactly what we got, so a nice little trade there. We also talked about looking for an afternoon breakdown trade on crude oil. It If it failed this break out to the upside and got underneath that last conditional change with trend signal, we could probably come back and test the 20 area, which was right in here. This was the exact setups. While these aren't great trades, this is the trades that made money that we were able to capitalize being on the right side of the market and identify that inflection point as to when you're going to see that change of energy. As we talked about in the room this week, it's really kind of uh, not a lot. We As traders, we don't want to sit in a trade for hours and, and sit there and sweat through it. We want to be in a trade with the least amount of heat, with the most amount of profit, and the least amount of time. That's what we're looking for most traders want to see, unless you're option writers. Then we came in on, uh, um, again, this was a nice little day trade. In fact, this pattern right here is very similar. I could I could actually show you a tweet, which I did to the room today, of almost the exact same setup, where we get a, um, 
a market that moves up in a trend line, we break a last conditional change, which is what that white line on TradeStation shows. It, this gives us that last condition identification. Um, what we didn't see, but it was on your, just as a, for those that were here in the open house, for the open house this week, I wanted, as the email said, here, what's today's event about, this webinar? It's about reviewing what the hell we, we did this week, take accountability and see, um, you know, before, during, and after the fact, just as a quick review, kind of like professional journalism, uh, journaling, uh, you know, and, and taking accountability of your trades. What really transpired? And and I had mentioned that we had a low closed doji and the system kind of like went flat and it proceeded to move lower. But uh, in the time frame that we had another great setup, um, instead of trying to catch and buy near resistance um, and then get chopped up back and forth, up and down, this is again a five minute chart, friends. Um, we waited for the trend to reverse. We had a PPS sell signal. It broke and closed below last conditional change. More importantly, it had a low closed doji. So I just mentioned I, 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 this is something that we really kind of focus in on and we talk about this in mentoring, this setup, because it happens frequently in the market. Um, other setups, we identified, uh, you may have taken this one with me. Uh, this was, not, again, um, while we didn't buy the low and we didn't sell the high, what we did is we identified that the euro currency was entering a seasonally strong period of time. We entered, uh, had a daily buy. We showed volume was accumulating. And we said, you know what, I want to buy this market um, as it proves itself and, and starts to take out the old highs. And we had, a, a, a again, with the euro currency, if you remember, that 112.55, again, that double nickel of uh, term that I used. Um, and we utilized a stop entry method to have the market take us into that trade. I personally got stopped out on my trailing stop right there on that low. But again, you could see where the white line is the last conditional change. And after that move to the upside, that was pretty much it for that day and that time frame that we had to work with. So, I mean, in essence, identifying the point of the trend and the move, that was pretty good. Yesterday we tried to do, this is the trade, I, I use this as an example for the trade that didn't happen. Uh, we're trying to do a, uh, with earnings coming out in um, about two weeks, we have option expiration next week. Uh, the indicators showed that uh, Amazon was, was kind of rallying on some light volume. So what we wanted to do was the um, 550, 555, 520, 515 iron condor. And we were working orders at 265, which was realm of real, realism. I mean, the thing was uh, uh, at the um, at the time was uh, trading around 260. Um, so using a price limit order of 265 was within the realm of reality. The market did rally, never filled it, unable. Today's action, kind of ironic, came right down um, to the 520. Uh, it bounced back up. So. Um, this is kind of like the target that I believe that the market is going to stay in the range. And with Amazon, what's ironic is we were bullish the market. We were looking for equities. I said, listen, today's action, while we didn't specifically put a uh, day trade to buy, my comments all day long to warn people was I don't, I don't want to be a seller. We've been selling rallies up here as day trades and nickel and diming the market a little bit. Um, we had some long positions on. We we're in the trading room from a carryover trade, something we even tweeted out weeks ago about long Twitter. Really good stuff. And, um, you know, the the methodology has really kind of helped us in, in, in identifying even this week's um, areas of interest to focus in on, such as those weekly high-closed doji, which the um, document... Um, isn't showing us, but I'll, I'll I'll bring that back to you guys if you have not been in the trading room. I'll show that to you in just a minute. I mean, looking at some of the names this week uh, that we picked out on our scans, um, such as Mickey D's. I mean, Mickey D's, as you can, and I want to kind of focus in on, this is the uh, trade station package. Here is um, the high close doji, the PPS. High close dojis are actually illuminated in orange, painted in orange on the chart. And so we're looking for strong performance on stocks. We also had a silly little company called Microsoft. Now, you know, what's funny is that we could have said, hey, we'd like Apple. 
but we didn't. We, we, we wanted to say, listen, Apple's got a problem, and actually we wrote about that. You may want to read through our, um, what, what the analysis was for the week in the, those weekly thoughts. That weekly thought, if you go back and reflect on what was written, in, in, um, considering the fact it was written on a Sunday, it, is, it was pretty insightful. Um, so all you need to know is how do you trade a high closed OG? What is the high closed OG? And we'll cover that in just a second. Um, you know, PAYX, paychecks. I mean, here's another one that we picked up um, in um, the high closed doji scan, which we had uh, in all fairness, uh, which I know we've kind of uh, reviewed these um, in the trading room uh, already this week. But for those who haven't been here, we had um, another one which was called uh, in the real estate investment trust region, AIV. Small little thing. This is the weekly uh, performance so far. Um, another one was SNDK, SanDisk. Um, so those were kind of like some of the names that all of them, while they're not going to um, make you retire this week, they were all solid trade signals. And, um, you know, in, in the scheme of things, let me share with you something here. Um, today's action, while we saw some amazing moves in a stock that we've been uh, tracking and, 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 and watching, which we discussed this week, which was Twitter. And I take a look on my radar screen here, and I want to show you something. If you could just if focus here. Here's the top sectors that, we've, that we watch and follow, okay? The, um, the reason why the NASDAQ was weighed back a bit today was because the effect of biotech. But if we go down and we start looking at, well, some of the financials, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, City, none of the, these guys were all negative today. Regional banks were all strong. Um, so finding the strength in the market, this is interesting. The industrials, something we were focusing on and talking about with Union Pacific, the railroad. Um, looking at uh, UPS, the boys in brown, FedEx in the transportation. In technology, here's the key. Here's what's funny. Look at some of these names that are did not do. Amberella. I mean, talk about slap in the face. We have a big rally in the stock market. And look at some of these names that got crushed today. Well, crushed is a big, it's all subjective. Apple. Why wasn't Apple should have been up? Amazon. We were looking at an iron condor saying, hey, listen, this is a, a one stock that's probably going to be neutral for a little while. Not bullish, not excitingly bearish, but Amazon was right in the sweet spot had they allowed us to get filled. So again, in in the PowerPoint it says the trade that never happened because they didn't get we didn't get filled. Um, Mobileye, FireEye, those are pretty widely held, and everyone kind of thinks those are are nifty stocks. Uh, Google, Google, Oracle. Um, look at Facebook down two whole cents, uh, and then as we move down, some of the semis like Intel, something we've been kind of looking at. We've noticed a lot of the changes in these markets because what this, this radar screen shows us is what the trend status is based on the PPS indicator, what the monthly pivot's doing, whether it's bullish or bearish, what the changes are from uh, one day to the next. These are daily PPS buy and sell signals, not positive net changes. It's nice to see positive net change in, you know, in Hewlett-Packard and being in an uptrend, it's another thing to note that it's been in a weekly sell signal, and now it's going into a weekly buy signal. By the way, that's what this whole column represents. How many stocks are going to actually flip into a weekly buy signal this week? And um, actually, if you just focus on this one column that says reversal right here, I highlighted in white, you'll notice that there's a bunch of flashing, blinking stuff and it's turning green it's saying bullish and it's turning green and there's an enormous amount of s p 500 stocks that are going to flip into a weekly buy signal so this week is going to be exciting to look for some powerful buy signals for some uh you know i i guess I, there's no other way to say it money making events right and that's what we're kind of trying to look for um and someone in the trading room today mentioned about netflix and Ironically, we've been talking about other entertainment stocks like Viacom, V-I-A-B. Um, one that's going to pop up on uh, the list today, if I may insert, 
blank row, um, this little small company called um, 21st Century Fox. Um, it's now, look at this, 21st Century Fox, by the way, it's a $28 stock, and um, it's going to be uh, generating, firing off bullish signals as well. So the sector looks good, and it's not just Netflix. Netflix up on news that they're raising their prices or something of that nature off the top of my head. So what what is important for me, like, you know, not all stocks did well, and the ones that did not do well, like eBay, um, they got kind of uh, smacked in the face. So uh, we are seeing a, a, um, a live change in the market here, and we are seeing uh, some really healthy moves here coming into um, – this month. So when I posted Fox, let me show you something about Fox. Um, it's not only going to generate a daily buy signal, but after a little downtrend, at, and, and it might be too late, but we'll find out at the end of the month, it's going to form a monthly high close doji. And that's going to be kind of even something uh, a little more interesting that we can discuss uh, at the end of the month. So anyway, I wanted to go through a few things that we've been uh, how we derive our trade recommendations, how we derive our, our analysis, and, and go from, from there. As promised today, as a review for the open house members, the people that went through the open house, I did want to just get this out of the way real quick. Um, again, this is the link. I'm going to put it into the room. Okay, If you click on that link, it's in the room. All right? If you click on that link, if you want to join our trading room, you'll have access to, uh, obviously, Monday mornings planning and scanning. You'll receive my written thoughts and observations. We email that to members now on Sunday. So you'll get that. And if you if you sign up today, by the way, if you get this doing, we'll try it, I, as hard as we can to get your uh, name filed into the system so that you're there in the email so that you get this Sunday night rather than Monday. You'll have access to uh, my attendance in the room. I'm usually in the room Monday through Friday from 9 to noon. We day trade in the futures. We look for swing trades with stock and option strategies. And the methods used, when I say it's straight from the book, it's really straight from the books. When people ask what books, candlestick and pivot point trading triggers, that's one, and mastering the stock market, that's the other. Okay. So that's the URL link directly for this $100 price. If you've been with us in the room, you traded well this week. If not, if you watched and just wanted to see what we were doing, you know that we were solidly calling the right trend, the right direction, and the right timing and price structure for entries. That's very important. So with that said, I look forward to those that want to give us a spin and a test drive and give a little bit more time and, and, and at least – if you did take some of our trades this week, then I'm sure you uh, um, you found the value in joining. So we look forward to having you with us and joining our family and community. So here's the deal. What do traders want? I've already said it. We want we need the confidence to pull the trigger on entries and exits. You know, when do you get in? When do you get out? Um, today, for example, we did a little trade on Twitter. Um, I actually tweeted this out, and I believe it was, if I recall, the actual date was on uh, September 1st. What I was looking at doing was old school stuff that if you're directionally bullish but you want duration, okay, um, and implied volatility is high. Now, when I went to option school <laughs> 30 some odd years ago, um, you know, the whole thing is that there's all different ways to trade a market. And but the one thing that we that has not changed, the one constant is that implied volatility. The higher implied volatility, the higher the price structure of the premiums. Um, and with that said, it doesn't mean you, if you're a directional trader you can't make money buying premium. It just means that you're going to have a more difficult time making money. And so one thing that we do if we think we're bullish is that you can it, go out in time. You might pay extra money but then get into a wide vertical call spread, wide. And that's what we did. If the market over time kind of calms down and, the, and, and volatility comes in like it has, right, 
you buy back the short side and you stay net long with plenty of time. And that's exactly what we did. We got into a wide vertical call on Twitter. We did what's called legged out last week of the short side call. And it left us with a net long call. Now, you option traders know exactly what I'm talking about. But today, at the right time, we came into the room. The market hit what we call a last conditional change resistance spot. And I said, listen, right here, take half off. Whatever you got net long, net long, take half off in Twitter. And that's the right way to trade and how I'd like to. So a lot of times, you'll, we actually followed up with a tweet. So as a member in the room, let's say we discuss this trade, we put this trade on, and you're not there in the afternoon. Well, what I do is very simple. We just go up and um, put on a, uh, you, you, all you have to do is go to how we, we've been uh, helping people is you just go up to the Twitter, okay, um, and you can click on that, the, the little T logo, Twitter, and just, you know, sign up to receive our tweets, all right? Uh, first and foremost, you will see a lot of stuff. By the way, I, now that I'm here, uh, uh, even in the trading room, this chart right there, this exact setup, this exact pattern is very similar to the trade setup that we did uh, um, on um, Tuesday. Excuse me. I, I had a brain uh, um, snafu. You know, so it almost looks like it's the same chart that I'll share with you in the PowerPoint uh, just once again. If you think about it, almost the same same things happen. The same coincidental things happen. So anyway, as a member in the room, just to let you know, added uh, bonus, uh, you can go and, and you'll see like um, we've put out what high closed OG, low closed OG setups are out there for the day. And so you can kind of look at, at some of those um, setups that we've put out. Like uh, we had uh, on September 24th in Netflix, Fizz, Soda, Coca-Cola, low closed OGs, Kite, shoe carnival and tap and you can go back and uh, another trade that we had talked about and i know uh, i'm going to get um slapped around for this i always forget how to pronounce this restaurant it's it's not zo it's zoe's zoe's we were kind of big on uh looking at some of the restaurant names in um the market so we actually do a little bit of uh more analytics with stocks and if nothing's there then guess what we, we, we like to fill our time with day trades and vice versa. So as I was saying, confidence to pull the trigger on entries and exits come from consistently seeing results and seeing that same setup. That's your trade, your A trade sort of thing. So that's one of the things that we, we like to do. Uh, having the ability to spot the low risk, great reward setups. A great reward, I'll be honest with you, if you have a high probability trade, 67%, 75%, like, in other words, 7 out of 10 times the trade works, even if you have a 1 to 1 risk reward ratio, it's still a, a, a winning strategy, okay? We want to kind of manage the trades a little more and trail stops, but, you know, the, the secret to making money in the market is really, it really comes down to, to a couple things. Um, being disciplined and having the patience to wait for the right setup and paying attention to what the tape reading skills that we've been teaching people and what, what I've learned through the years um, and how to apply those in the market. We try to look for higher probability trades. And just remember, higher probability does not mean higher profitability. In fact, it's actually the opposite. Sometimes by the time we get a, a, a trigger that we have a high probability that we're going to make money, that the trend's already been established, we've got to anticipate that we aren't going to be able to ride a, a trend as much, especially in day trading. So think about what I said. Let me repeat that. If you have a high probability trade, it's probably because the setup has already been a trend, established trend trade. And going with a trend is, you know, the highest probability and profitable trade. It's knowing when to get off the train ride. So instead of being greedy, Scaling out and trailing stops is the best way to do that. And we want high probability trades with little to no drawdown or heat. In other words, I want to get in the trade, and as soon as I get in, it would be nice to see the momentum show me an increase in profits. So 
immediate results to generate profits is what I think a lot of traders would like. How do we get that? Um, I think you need to acquire superior analytical skills. One thing that we kind of share with people, learn to anticipate market opportunities. What's coming into the market? What's coming down the road? What are we going to be faced with? What could move the market? What might not move the market? We have the potential for, by the way, um, a three-day holiday weekend, by the way. I mean, it is a bank holiday on Monday. I know the stock market's open, but remember, money makes the world go round. And if the banks are closed, money ain't moving as much, right? So the money, we might see, uh, you know, a, a very muted move in the stock market on Monday, by the way, as traders maybe want to rest up after this week and get maybe um, rested up for earning season, which is upon us next week. So anyway, I also want to say that we achieve success by making trades based on facts, not listening to someone's opinion, not listening to some guy that says, oh, I think that this is bottomed. I think this can't go. I like to look at facts via the tools that I have at hand. And the tools that we have at hand, we'll share with you right now in just a second. So you also have to be comfortable with the initiation of the trades, risk, reward, prospects. So in other words, if you identify what the risk is, and even if on a day trade you say, gee, if I'm going to risk on the S&Ps, you know, 12 ticks, I'm going to risk 15 ticks, whatever the risk factor is, 30 ticks, I mean, whatever your risk factor is, um, but whatever the signal is, do understand that you're at least expecting a one-to-one -one or more. And, and if you're able and comfortable with that, then you need to be properly positioned. And that doesn't mean to be, you know, trading one or two. It means being properly positioned with in accordance to your overall equity. What is your amount of capital that you're putting to work in each trade? Okay? You can't say, I really like this trade, so I'm going to go with 20. Or I don't like this trade, and I'm only going to go with two. Or I really like this trade, and I'm going to go with 100 options. You know, you need to kind of have a systematic approach to what you're doing in, in, in based on your risk. And that's what I mean by being properly positioned. So I don't think chart traders can survive on chart analysis alone. And, and if I may say, what, is, what do I mean by chart analysis? Um, I think a lot of traders just use price-based indicators. MACD, stochastics, Bollinger Bands, moving averages, and all that is chart price-based analysis. I think what we need to do is to get people in, in tune with learning how to use a combination of non-correlated indicators using multiple time frame analysis, daily, weekly. We cheated with the euro currency by looking not just as a day trade, we cheated by looking at the end of day, the daily charts, and saying, look, we're in a buy signal on the daily charts. And we looked at volume coming into the market. That's, that's in essence what the heck we were uh, looking at here. So um, um, when it, let me go over here and go to futures, and I'm going to go over to the euro currency, um, and, and let me just define that again. Here's the um, now. Granted, we don't have a huge range, but all we did was trade in accordance to what the market gave us. That's all we could do, right? So when I look at this, I mean, many of you, it, it may be hard to see, but the the PPS buy signal, we're in a, a, a buy signal, and it's right here, okay? So it's in a daily buy. The volume is pointing up. We've got a positive movement in the histogram, so it tells us the market's bullish. Now, I don't want to buy a pullback, because what if it crashes? So I want to buy, if the market pulls back and starts to advance, I want to go and let the market take me in. That was, in as a review, that's exactly why we took the breakout trade in the euro currency. So again, we cheated using multiple time frame analysis. All right. Now, for stock traders, we had few people come into the room and saying, I don't really day trade. And, um, you know, I'm looking to trade options. And, and while that's great, this was not a, a, a week for me to put on a, a lot of new positions as much as we already had positions on. And um, I think what we are looking at is if, if one is interested in just trading the stock market, and of course, the techniques that we utilize for day trading are very applicable for stock trading. And identifying the strengths and weaknesses of what sectors 
kind of gives us a better feel for the market. Many of you were there for today's session where we had to do the dual broadcast with uh, TradeStation. And one of the things that I was pointing out was, hey, guys, look at some of these other sectors. Um, you know, take a look at uh, the materials. Like, Take a look at, um, you know, we understand that biotech's got a little bit of a problem that may weigh on the NASDAQ, but look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Look at some of these other uh, areas. We were seeing strength in numbers by the advanced decline analysis. Um, so we have, um, I think, in this day and age, you traders right here sitting with me right now, you have very powerful ability of, of right now getting an edge in the market. You have algorithmic scan criteria that give you a real edge in the market. Um, one other, uh, and that is by using the PPS as we demonstrated this week of how to run scans in, in both Thinkorswim for TOS users, for our friends at, at, at Thinkorswim. Uh, another important aspect is this relative strength and percent performance. You know, something that if you, if you did notice this net changes there in percent terms is very important. And I like to take a look at, like, for example, when I look at a, an entire sector that goes green, and if I look at that sector and I find that almost the majority of the stocks in that sector are up about the same percent. So consumer discretionary, 1.2, 2%, 1%, half percent, 1%, 1%, 1%, all the way down, 1%, 1%. That tells me that's not just one or two speculators getting into the market forcing this sector up. That's institutional spreading the wealth out a bit and they're divvying up and almost going and some, of course, Green Mountain Coffee Roaster outperformed, but you know, up, you know, it's not hard to move that that one up three percent. The point being is, if there is strength in numbers, right? Strength in numbers concept. The more stocks that go up, and and as well, if they're all up about the same percentage, that's important to me. So um, I think this is what we, as a as a quick review uh, this week, we went through sharing with you guys how to run the scan using the PPS buy signals in Thinkorswim scan, and then like going down the list and finding out, gee, is there a concentration? If I'm, if I'm sitting here running a scan in all NASDAQ and I only get 56 names that populate for the day, that doesn't tell me that, that there's a very strong buy signal in NASDAQ. But whatever is a buy signal, if I see a concentration in one certain group or an industry, then I can start doing a little bit more homework, okay? So trading's about, you know, finding direction of the market, applying a strategy. And if you're an options trader, remember, trading options trading is more about probabilities. It's not about certainties. And I think options traders could really utilize better analytic skills. And if they did, um, I mean, they may try and then not use the term uh, repair as much in their um, vocabulary. That seems to be a, a, a big word. Uh, we need to repair. Uh, basically, repair means I'm in a losing trade and I need to throw good money after bad and get into the same trade twice, so to speak. Um, this is, I think, you know, one of the neatest things that um, – if used properly and educated, you guys would have a tremendous edge in the market. Um, and I always tell people when I do a presentation in a seminar that the person's pivots is probably um, most underused and most it is the most powerful tool because it not only tells you what the potential at the end of a session, what tomorrow or the next session's market condition is, Yes, it does give us targeted support and resistance, and a lot of times the market hits those exactly. But this, this relationship between that blue and that gold, the pivot to the pivot point moving average that we have, that helps us to define whether the market's bullish or bearish. Then it's if the market comes down on a bullish day and we got a buy signal or a breakout or a high close doji, we can then make the determination to go with that bullish market outlook okay so and then we use other tools did the momentum histogram show some positive uh convergence did we see the market make newer lows with a higher convergence is the volume action starting to support that as a bullish move 
those uh, are our tools that we use in the trading room as well. So what are the benefits of the work that I've put out and the, and the, the indicators that I've created? Well, first of all, I think it helps option traders gain a, a more superior analytic skill. Um, and I think it helps all traders anticipate market opportunities so that if you can look for a setup and then wait for the trigger, and then once it says to get in, then get in, that's what I mean by anticipating a market opportunity. And that's what we did this week with you guys. Remember, we set up, had nice setup and said, here's the setup. we got to wait for the trigger. It's either a sell signal or a close below that line in the sand, so to speak. That was the trigger, right? Or an arrow pops up on the screen. And I think it, what I do is I help traders make trades based on facts rather than, well, you know, this looks good and that looks good. So we like to enter high probability trades. And again, with little to no drawdown pressure, immediate results. So, you know, what I like to look for when I look at this chart, and this is Thinkorswim, right? The old Thinkorswim from two weeks ago, right? Um, actually, this is from September 17th, so three weeks ago. Um, this is still defining what the, and again, you're looking at a 15-minute chart. Um, if the market's looking to recover and we're starting to see signs that it's going to uh, see an upside trend, I use this other tool called On Balance Volume, which has been more popularized over the last few years that I've been promoting this and, and sharing its, its use. And I think it's, it's a great example of we've got a person's pivots, that's the horizontal red fuchsia green lines, We've got the PPS momentum indicator. Those are the actual arrows that point up and down on the chart. And then we've got the condition of the market of volume and direction of trend volume with the OBV. And I think those three things combined with a few other items are just a very powerful tool in helping traders make money consistently. Now, every once in a while you can say, listen, I'm a little confused here. I, I don't you know, the market still looks like it could go up like we did today. And I don't want to sell rallies in here today, guys. And I know all of you heard that. And I just didn't. I said, we've gone to the well one too many times. This market, it has this sneaky thing. I think there's a lot of traders that are caught short the market. People have been selling premium above the market. You know, and, and uh, the indicators that we use are, are, are flashing bullishness. And all it would really take, I think in, in my own mind, I know I probably said this in my own heart, I know I said this, I said all it would take was be an institutional trader to flip the light switch on and want to get long and this thing could rock to the upside. Those were probably my exact words. And because that's what I believe. And, that, and, and that's what I've more importantly, uh, longer term kind of positioned for. So I think we had a couple things in, in designed within what I call the perfect trading method. And the perfect trading method is I'd like to be able to spot a high probability trade, maybe be 67% accurate in that it's determined to be the right direction, knowing exactly where to place a stop loss, knowing the expected time frame to see results. In other words, if I buy it today, on a daily chart, I should see results in the next two days, positive results. That's very positive. If I get a weekly buy signal, I better see positive results within the next two weeks. And then, of course, setting initial profit targets for scale outs and then understanding price levels to trail stops. So, by the way, it's very, I do have that. It's very easy to learn. We've had huge success, and it continues to build even this week. Um, and I think tonight's event promises to give you a little insight um, that you're going to be able to apply. And when I say immediately, if not uh, tomorrow morning, then probably by next week. And, and if I go over here to the scanner, it's the high closed OG setup. That's the system. So, by the way, I ran this scan before we began. I ran the scan before we began. As you can see, I ran it at exactly 4.02 before the markets actually had a chance to really settle, so there might be some variation differences. But um, looking at this, we had 133 stocks generate a daily high close doji. So I'm going to do my work. This isn't quite, this is uh, uh, Sempra Energy uh, Nucor, 
Uh, that uh, sounds familiar. I think that's utilities, right? Iron and steel. Why did I get that wrong? Um, iron and steel. It's a material stock. Uh, Nucor. Wow. Huge volume, by the way, on Nucor. Um, just uh, level three communications. Let's take a look. I'm just clicking on things uh, over here. And, I mean, by the way, let's let's look at this one. This not this is uh, generated, by the way, folks, for tomorrow. It does have a high closed doji. It did have some daily volume. But look what's really interesting. If Friday we close above last week's high, it's going to generate a weekly high closed doji pattern. Momentum indicator is turning positive. Volume's a little lighter than I'd like, but this might be a trade that we could uh, look for, especially if we get uh, more names in that space backing it, right? Strength in numbers concept. So for tomorrow, we've got a, a bunch of names. Who's I just saw this one place called, uh, didn't I just see El Pollo? El Pollo, El Pollo, high closed doji in the restaurant field. Not only that, but it's going to generate a weekly buy signal. So, man, there's there's still some target, a target rich environment uh, coming into the market for tomorrow that we will filter this stuff out and go through this um, in the trading room. Um, this is AES. It is. Please make sure I know what I'm talking about. It is a utility. Thank God I got that answer right. Yes, electric utilities. So. Any event, this is kind of like the bullish high closed OG setup. It's very powerful. I, actually, these two photos are ripped off my own book. Um, the first one I wrote uh, last decade, and um, you know they're so powerful. We run these scans, and and again, this isn't examples from 20 years ago. This is this is kind of like this year um, when we see stocks that give us a strong coincident factor. Deckers. Now, a lot of these trades, were, they're just short-term big blasts, but if you can get an early warning system that says buy it on the close or the next session's open, and, and you can learn to trail that stop and learn what these white lines are, this is very powerful. By the way, this is Land's End, which we were uh, in on before and made recommendations on uh, back in August. When the stock market was kind of crashing, Land's End was going up. Um, Land's End's an uh, uh, online retailer, right? Um, in fact, uh, we've had a lot of different names. Biogen, um, a lot of these names, when we go through, just to share with you what we look for, weekly scans. I've actually, um, I've actually posted a lot of this stuff on YouTube. And a lot of these names, you can go back and look at them and said, gee, and I'm not talking about last year, I'm talking about this year. So we talked about High closed OG, low closed OGs, all you have to do is know what an HCD stands for and how to trade it. So I think we've put together a very comprehensive, powerful trading system that helps people identify trading opportunities. So I don't care if you're a day trader, a swing trader, an option trader, a stock trader. If you can identify something that has a very powerful system, a signal backed by strong volume, that you should see expected results, that's going to improve your trading results. If you have the knowledge and the background of how to trade options, you just apply my directional stuff to your optional skills. And I'm telling you what, I think this is going to be a life changer. And I mean that. And if I didn't, I wouldn't say it. So um, we've actually had, I mean, just many times we run these scans. And if I could teach people to do this on their own, it's just going to generate, uh, I, I think, just a plethora of happiness out there, you know. Um, this is a, a screenshot that we did um, when we were actually high uh, and mighty on the energies just last month. Um, look at some of these prices, and, and one was I tweeted about jokingly about Marathon Oil. This is when it was just trading, you know, just off the 14 uh, in Apache. Big moves back then. Look at where Exxon was at 74. It's not there anymore. So I think that for one thing, what we need to do is to help guys, ladies and gentlemen, we need to help you guys look at a couple dimensions, time and price, and, and do that for a reason. Your trading style should be tailored to the time you have versus the time the markets demand. And two things happen. People are looking for option writing strategies more, 
And I think in this environment, it's been something you're going to have to learn more directional stuff. And you're going to have to learn to be diversified in your skills. You just can't do iron condors all the time. You just can't do covered call all the time. You just can't do credit spreads all the time. You can't do strangles all the time. There's a time and a place for a specific strategy. What we need to do is to help traders understand what tools they can use to get better analysis and therefore make better trade strategy decisions. That's really, I think, the key. Anyway, I have um, a friend of mine, Dr. Scott. Jeff Scott's an individual trader, and, and many of you know Jeff. Uh, maybe you've seen him at a trade show. And Jeff is actually, um, we've become uh, quite close. And uh, Jeff's actually been using, he was probably not, if not one of the first, uh, a longtime friend uh, uh, of the uh, person methodology and utilizing the trade station indicators. Um, it's something that he's been using a long time. And um, I, I, I invited Jeff to come in. If you guys are interested in learning about the trade station uh, indicator, or if you're interested in uh, just joining the trading room, uh, sign up on that link that I, I posted already, and I'll put it in the trading room one more time. Um, and just go in and click on that link, join the trading room for a month. I think by learning what this radar screen is about, how to utilize it efficiently, by one look, I know that we're in a monthly buy signal with pivots, a monthly buy signal with the weekly pivots, a monthly buy signal with the daily pivots. I know what the relationship is of price to where it is to the support I know the percent change, if it rallies to resistance, we're about 15% to resistance, and if it breaks support, it's less than 1%. I can immediately set a guide to what my profit loss is going to be. So that's the radar screen. It gives you a lot of information. The futures page layout lets me look at any one commodity and have my indicators on there. This we didn't talk about today. But I do it every week because I find it very important. This is, in this environment, we are trading like today. Very important. Very important. We identified that, I mean, per se, the best performing sector was between the Dow and the S&Ps. The worst was the NASDAQ because of the weight of, or the chain around the neck of the NASDAQ with the... Um, IBB. Okay. So, with that said, here's the thing. We put out the spiders, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the Russell, the NASDAQ composite, and the NYSE, and we like to take a look, a measurement of what the advanced decline, and that's part of this package. I wanted to also share with you here, and I do this every once in a while, so I'm going to share it with you guys right now. A lot of a lot of indicators are uh, that people use in breadth analysis. You've heard of the tick, you've heard of the arms index, you've heard of the McClellan oscillator, maybe. All of that is based off the NYSE composite index. The problem is, it, just by looking at the NYSE alone in this day and age, you're looking at a tool that might be outdated. I think we need to step up the plate as I've been teaching for years. One of the reasons is this. The NYSE, out of 1,887 companies, 349 are foreign companies. So it's not a pure U.S. company, number one. Number two, 20% um, is weighted on health care. Number three, over 50% of this index is actually uh, weighed with stocks that are interest rate sensitive, including bond funds valued in price, and REITs, real estate investment trusts. So you're not really getting, it might be a little too diversified, but yet it might also be when we see the whole thing about interest rates changing and the whole thing about biotech going down, it might give you a false sense of security of the overall health of the market. That, my friends, is why we like to take a look at multiple segments of the market, such as what affects the S&Ps? What affects the Dow? The Dow has two pharmaceutical companies. I know there's only 30 stocks in the Dow, but it only has two pharmaceutical companies. Exxon's in there. Retail's in there. 
it's diversified, right? But when you look at the NYSE with interest rate sensitive stocks, when you look at healthcare, you know, you got to understand where's the money flow going. If it's going in biotech, then of course the NASDAQ's going to look more positive. With the weight of energy earlier this year weighing down on the S&P 500, that's and the financials of course. So can you imagine with all of the upside in the energy stocks this past week, with the upside in some of the financials this week, you know, we've been able to determine what index should do better. So that's awful program, uh, important. These pre-programmed scans, they're very important, as we've already shared with you. So I invite you guys to come and try things. More importantly, I wanted it to, to um, Jeff actually is the one who, who orchestrated putting together what we consider and call the pug group, the person's user group. So I've invited Jeff to come and if he, if he is there. And... Yeah. Um, talk about his experience and and what it means for him so uh jeff if you're there I'd love to hear your voice no, people can type in a y if they can hear me all right perfect uh my name is jeff scott um the first thing to be clear i am i've become friends with john which is awesome but i am an independent trader and um not affiliated from the business side of person's planet um I, like many people and those who've been to some of my live meetings know, I've probably bought every program in the market and my computer is littered with thousands of indicator packages. Um, so it's not a shocker that I find that I was one of the early people to buy the lifetime package. Um, I bought it several years ago when we didn't have a trade station app store. And frankly, it's a lot like everything else. There's a lot to it, but until you get the education that surrounds it, um, you use, it's like having a Porsche and driving it on a 15 mile an hour street all the time. Now, that leads to the PUG group and why I did the PUG. I do some independent education um, a couple times a year. I, I actually be speaking at John's meeting as well, which is very exciting for me. And at my last meeting, there was a lot of interest after John spoke to my attendees um, but sort of what do we do once we get the software? So I decided to start a program. You know, John spoke and then he went to Europe. So I couldn't really ask permission. So I decided to launch a users group. I thought it would start independent and perhaps become more um, intertwined with John's work. So it's called the PUG group. Anybody that has access to John's lifetime indicators is welcome to join for at least for the first 12 months. We'll be going through some customization about what it means after the first 12 months based upon how the first year goes. Right now, again, the only fee is you buy the indicators. The reason why I did it was because I wanted to make sure that everybody who buys that lifetime package actually uses it. And within the group, we have our own designated Dropbox where several of us, not just myself and John, have contributed scans, um, charting views, um, things like earnings indicators from outside that they thought would be useful to plot on the chart. And then we meet a couple times a month online. Um, John has been great. I think he's been in there three or four of the times. We started it in July. So if you do the math, that's pretty much on a monthly basis. And I call it almost mini mentoring where he spends an hour, hour and a half. And he actually goes through how he uses every night the indicators. Um, as I said, I've used and own almost every package out there. Um, I'm a power user of a couple products. I think some people know me online as HGSI Doc because I do a lot of um, programs um, showing people how to use that product. And frankly, the only reason I do that as well is I'm not paid is it really frustrates me when people buy things and then they sit on their desktop and don't get any value. So the PUG group has become great. We've got quite a few members. Um, the next meeting I'll do one night from the Traders Expo um, just to review other things that I've learned. Um, and it's really designed to give you, a, you know, at this point, 12 months of very personal support time to make sure that you get value out of the software. And just a couple seconds about how I use it and then I'll shut up. Um, the scanning function which John mentioned mm -hmm to me is sort of the critical thing. I like to work from a really large universe of stocks, probably about 3,000. 
and I'm able to scan those stocks on a nightly basis, um, even intraday looking for, thanks John, high closed dojis and the different buy signals. And that really allows me to cut down the amount of work that I have to do. Um, I've also learned that um, using the tools that John's gone over, his histogram, which he did, I don't think he talked about tonight, but which we talk about a little bit in the pug group, which is included in the package, the on-balance volume, his buy signals, and the HCDs and LCDs, it really helps me get high-value trades. Now, do I use other stuff? Yeah. And if you participate in the pug meeting, um, anything else that I use on a routine basis that I've developed myself, I actually give to PUG members at no cost. Um, but really the backbone of what I do is I scan daily or nightly using the TradeStation scanner. I get a list of high probability targets. I then have a screen that I call my screener where I take those high probability targets and just as John is walking through them, in one scan I have, actually I had a fourth time frame so I could look at intraday as well. And I look for the setups. I look for the buy and sell signals of the PPS. I look for those high and low close dojis. I look for OBV breaking out. Um, I look at specific changes in the histogram. So in a relatively reasonable period of time, I can take a list of 30, 40 potential stocks, get it down to two or three stocks, and um, really get my list sharpened for the morning. Now, from a career perspective, I actually retired for a couple of years and got bored, even though the trading kept me busy, and I went back to work. So to me, when I have a signal, for example, like the high closed doji, and that high closed doji has a very defined um, strategy about where you take the, set, the, 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 the trade, where you put your stop, how long before you give it to, to move before you have sort of a time stop. And those are trades that are very easy for me to put on um, overnight with specific buy orders and stop orders. And frankly, they trade when I'm on an airplane. And they're very safe trades because I've got defined stops. So I just want to welcome anybody who has information, to, who wants further information, you can reach out to me. I'm putting my email address in the little box right now, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have from a user perspective about the indicator package or about the PUG group. And um, I know Mary's got some specials, um, Mary being John's wife and business manager, also known in the, in the family as the boss, um, has some opportunities for you. Um, if you're interested. So thanks, John, for letting me say a few words, and I look forward to getting more members in the pub group. Thank you, Jeff. I mean, it's just like, um, you know, we're traders, and I know a lot of people, you know, get get bombarded with different things, and many of you have been around a long time with me and have seen us before. Um, you know, we're doing a lot of really good work consistently, and that's, uh, when I say good work, that's, uh, I guess, a compliant way of saying we're doing pretty well. And in this in this environment, um, it, it's uh, there's an old phrase we use in the room that uh, um, one of our old time students and friends as well, Andy Wyant, uh, Andy's here tonight, typed in the room the other day because this is something I, I, you know, I always say my community of, of members, you know, by having me come in and do this, they make me work hard. And the harder I work, the luckier I get. And uh, boy, we've been doing, um, I think, um, substantially well in this market environment. And a lot of my uh, current customers that are sitting here right now that I'm talking to in front of that I'd be able to look every one of you in the eye and you be able to say yep we've been actually uh, you know consistently been on the right side we don't win every single trade that's for sure but boy I'll tell you what we don't put people in I don't put myself in harm's way and we've come up with some good stuff so anyway if you uh, see that uh, you have room to improve and you're looking um, to say I want to take action the first thing you can do is simply take advantage of um, what we offered and this is a hundred I can't even believe I'm saying it a uh, hundred dollars to join the membership for the month if you'd like to come in the trading room yes granted I'm there from nine in the morning to noon um, again you'll get my weekly thoughts and observation which is pretty much me going through these scans on the weekend finding out changes of the market, looking what the overall uh, segments of the markets, what the strengths are, 
uh, what the AD lines look like. Um, what I was referring to earlier about the Dow Jones being a, a, a little bit stronger, the uh, AD line and the Dow, granted there's only 30 of them, but the AD line broke out the other day and volume broke out. And if volume uh, is, as you've heard before, uh, predicated that it precedes price, note that we did get uh, follow through in the Dow. At the very least, a week ago, we were saying, hey guys, this could, if anything, maybe this market is just acting as a, a trading range. Some of my students may remember that. In fact, we had, looking at this little tool here, it was very helpful in helping us to understand that the market was not as bearish as what we thought. So, any event, with that, that said, I didn't want to take much more of your time tonight. This was a, uh, a webinar to do a review of what we've been doing this week. Um, and I just want to uh, point out, you know, we try to take accountability for everything that we do here, good, bad, or indifferent. And uh, with that said, you know, I think steps to trading success, just imagine the outcome, both good and bad. Visualize what it is you like about a trade. You know, if you understand what goes into the trade, what looks great about the trade, um, if you have complete understanding how to use the best tools, then you're going to make the best informed decisions and get the support you need, which is what uh, the Pug Group was all about. You know how to get a hold of us. You know where our website is. It's PersonsPlanet.com. Take advantage of that offer. Someone else just pointed out that, hey, I don't want to sign up and automatic. Uh, listen, we're not that, that kind of uh, uh, people that uh, jam uh, auto, auto uh, repeats on your credit card. If you don't want to have anything to do with me after a month, I, I wouldn't understand why, but uh, that means you probably didn't follow directions. Um, but I think that you'll find a very uh, a friendly community and a lot of like-minded traders all looking to achieve one thing, consistent results day in and day out. And um, I wish you peace, everyone. And tomorrow is the last day of the open house. So Sign up so if you do, we will get your email. You'll be able to get and receive the weekly thoughts in your email box by Sunday and be able to plan your trading week next week as we are entering one of the most exciting time frames of the year, earnings season. With that, everyone, have a great evening. Thank you all very much for your time. Thank you, Jeff. Um, and um, it is uh, typically $100 for uh, a month, and after that, it's a whole whopping 150 John K. So if you do not find value after the first month, or you can't make eight ticks with me in the E-mini S&P on a day trade, or you can't make a $1 move on an option trade consistently to pay for your time in the room, not my time, your time in the room, um, then we fully understand. So... Um, that's that's what it is, and what it all it takes to be a member really is you know to have the proper education and to go through there, and we do that for uh, and and uh, pug user groups. So with that said, everyone have a great evening. Again, if you want to call the office, we'll sit down with you one on one and 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 give you a a, a hand holding and a, a you know answer your questions one on one. We understand that everyone has different needs, and uh, certainly. Uh, you know, you can always uh, send us an email as well, and it's at info at personsplanet.com. We look forward to seeing you guys, and again, in the trading room tomorrow. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you so much.